Hey, chat GPT, uh, write an intro for the customer acquisition show. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if chat GPT uh, gets performance anxiety. I'm feeling pressure to write well. Oh my goodness. Big fails. All right. That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to the customer acquisition show. We're excited to bring you the latest tips, tricks, and strategies for acquiring new customers and growing your business. Our expert guests today, Landon and Nick from the tier 11 team will share their insights and experiences to help you generate leads, convert them into customers and retain them for long-term success. Um, tune in every Friday, uh, at, uh, for ongoing chats about customer acquisition. Um, Landon and well, uh, Nick, thank you for joining us today. And ChatGPT, thank you as well. You're going to be a guest on the show too. Uh, we're all super excited about using ChatGPT for all kinds of things. Um, and it's generally pretty good, even if you got the date of when we go live wrong. Landon, Nick, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. great. I'm uh, I'm excited to chat about ChatGPT. This has been super exciting. So having the opportunity to just kind of shoot the shit with with some other people on this, I'm super excited. Yeah, it's the hot it's the hot topic right now. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. So, uh, like, what's your most excited? How are you most excited about ChatGPT at the moment? I mean, it's like so new, and there's like unlimited possibilities. But I feel like there's this like one thing that like really woke everybody up like what was that for you gosh there's you're right there's so much so to pick just one i would say iterating on copy has mm -hmm. been has been amazing so not just taking the first thing that comes out when you enter a prompt because i have seen that that a lot of copywriters are saying, well, you know, chat B GPT can't do this like I can. It's like, exactly, it can't. But you, the copywriters are going to have the best insights into what prompts to put in to get, get those iterations out. And it, it's, for example, if I was selling custom guitars, I could say, write 10 headlines for selling custom guitars for people with quality and craftsmanship is the most important thing. And it'll, it'll write 10 headlines about how well the guitars are built, how durable they are, etc. Now, if I say write 10 headlines based on, uh, for people who appearance is the most important thing, it's going to talk about how beautiful the guitars are, how stunning, you know, how stunning they are, eye-catching, things like that. So for me, I, I, I've been having a lot of fun just going in and trying to get different iterations of copy out of it. Yeah, that's, that's super exciting for me. I have a soft spot for the underdog when it comes to marketing and like small businesses and small creators. And I really see a tool like this, having the potential to kind of like give that newer or small creator, this competitive advantage where they may not be able to be consistent with generating content because of so many things that are involved to, coming up with a creative idea, generating a post for it, writing a headline for it, writing the show notes, writing your captions, but being able to leverage a tool like this to potentially almost act like a virtual assistant for somebody that is newer and trying to grow their business. That's really what has been really getting me excited. And I've been trying to see how much of my process I can automate through this tool. And it's been, it's been incredible. Yeah, I, I think... Right. I think that's what like what's really important here, and I've talked to a few people about it, and it doesn't like replace anybody at this point. It really, I think it requires the expert to interact with it, right? So I could have it write code and programming script and all that. I wouldn't know if it's right or wrong, but I think it really right. for me the big aha is like it solves the blank page problem, right? When you're starting. Yeah. The hardest thing is like, well, where do I start? I imagine that's the case for, you know, programmers as well. I saw a TikTok where a doctor was using it 
um, for writing a letter to the insurance company justifying an um, expensive uh, procedure. And it's like, he asked it to write a letter to the insurance company for this procedure, you know, for this ailment and to provide it with two journal references. And it just spit out the thing. And how long would that have taken a doctor to do? Like, it is really removing this whole, like the low value exercise for a lot of these things. Um, right, right. And it's, you still need the expert to verify and check. But like you said, that, that low level time consuming tasks, I mean, just, just taking that out of the equation, it's going to open up so much creativity. Mike Rhodes, the great shout out to Mike Rhodes, Google ads, very smart guy. I wrote the book on, wrote the book on Google ads, ultimate guide to Google AdWords, but he is always at the tip of the spear for anything new and exciting that can be used by everyone. So not this, I mean, this is why I'm excited about this because you don't need to be an engineer. You don't have to understand how AI works. You know, you can just use this and that's, it's becoming accessible to everyone. But the way he put it was the execution is going to become easier for, for programming, for, for managing ad accounts, for, for writing copy, but knowing what to execute, that's what's going to be valuable. Yeah, I agree. There's still going to be the art form that's never going to be able to be replaced, but I think it's going to allow people to get there quicker and not everybody needs to be the best. Not everybody needs to be an A-list copywriter to be able to sell something, but you're, you're hundred percent right. It can't tell you which headline is going to resonate with your ideal customer the most. You mm -hmm. still have to be able to look through those headlines and go, are any of these actually good? You still need to be able to know and feed it the information to create it, but you still need to be able to decipher and distill what is good, what isn't, and understand the limitations of it. But I think it's, this is like, this is moving in such an amazing direction. It's almost like we can get to a point where it's like the matrix where I can like plug in breakthrough advertising from Eugene Schwartz into chat GPT, learn all of this, and then use it to like, use that to write copy, you know? Cause I think, <laughs> I think it, it was, has information up to 2020 so it can't report mm -hmm. on like current events but right. this tool is just incredible in the amount of possibility and i love watching the videos of people using it in different ways and seeing how other people are leveraging this tool is super super cool prompt engineer that that may well become a new role. So knowing the prompts, engineering the prompts to put in to get the best outputs, having the best questions. This is, this is the thing. If you, if you, if you go at this with the better your prompts are, the better your questions, the better outputs you're going to get. Yeah. I think, you know, copywriting, people are like, oh, it's going to replace copywriting. And I think if we think about what the role, the job of a copywriter is, so much of it is research. Like copywriting mm -hmm. is in the research. And that's why I think GPT, like chat GPT really excels. It's because it has all this data. Like it's stored it. It's ingested all of the research data. And it does, it'll do a much better job than Google for the research in that it can take all the raw data is what you, what you would get from a Google search and summarize that for you in a way that makes it faster and leads you down these new paths and hopefully gives insights. Right. Right. And, and, and then again, and not even, I mean, chat GPT may be good for this, but there's other tools. If you can get transcripts of call recordings, customer call recordings, and just like you can use fireflies, mm -hmm. AI for summarizing meetings. I mean, if you get all of those transcripts upload to an AI interface and say, summarize the most, in, the, the, look for the patterns. What are the most common patterns, the most common themes or whatever the right question would be there to summarize. You might have thousands of phone calls. What's most important to these customers and find the right prompt and just get it to crunch all those mm -hmm. transcripts and it will tell you what your customers want. Yeah, it's so interesting just looking at all of these use cases from the data you can feed into it. I did something with my wife's business. It was really interesting because one of the things you run into with 
generic templates, you know, even hiring copywriters sometimes is it doesn't sound the same as the voice of the person that is the face of the brand. So if we're thinking like content creators, influencers, but we actually took the, the, the sales copy that she wrote from her sales page, pasted it into chat GPT, and then started having it write ads based on that. And it was so interesting because it sounded exactly the same as her because the information that was put into chat GPT, it used the same language. It pulled the same through line. It had the same kind of theme of copy, mm -hmm. same words, same verbiage, everything. So it totally sounded like she wrote all of these ads, which was like a really, really interesting thing. And something to, to your point there, Nick, I've put in a lot of copy. And when you ask it to summarize, it's really interesting to see what the AI is pulling through as like the common denominator of the copy. I think so many times people write stuff, but they don't actually know how to properly articulate their point. Mm. So you mm. might not be able to see from an outside perspective what people are taking away from this. But when this unbiased tool is like, oh, here's a summary. And you're like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. And it's like, well, it's probably is what people are taking away from what you wrote. <laughs> it's really interesting to get this feedback from this tool and be able to start to iterate from what you're doing. Right. And we all have our own way of perceiving the world, a very unique way of writing our own voice when we write. So it could be helpful, like you said, to write, to ask it to write the same thing here, but in a different tone of voice. So you can get that, that, that difference that maybe you can't get yourself. And, and also, like you said, get that extra perspective, which, you know, you may have blind spots for, Mm -hmm. And there's just certain tasks that you can do quick. If you think of something like a, cat, a cart abandonment email, they don't need to be super clever. They're usually fairly straight to the point, but it's the process mm. of like doing it and writing it. You can, I went into chat GPT and it's like, write me a cart abandonment email that offers customers with a 35% a off discount if they buy now. And like, it just pumps out this, like this great email. And then you just start to give it feedback you know, speak in the first person, you know, start do that with a more friendly tone, you know, add in scarcity and urgency. And it just keeps rewriting it until it hits something that is good or something that you can use as like a base to create from. And it's just going to speed up the process. I think for people that are willing to use it as a jumping off point, it's going to just right. make it so much quicker. Yeah, because that's the thing, Landon, you know, when you get the right one from your experience, you know, aha, that's what I was looking for. And that's where the, the experts are, are still going to thrive because if, if the playing field gets leveled and everybody's like, oh, okay, I can, I can get copy written, it's still those iterations aren't going to be strong. And so if Landon's going through, he's like, okay, yeah, not quite there yet. Add some, add some scarcity. Uh, to try a different tone of voice. And from that experience, you eventually, it hits it and you're like, yes. So I've been getting it to write songs <laughs> it's pretty good at writing songs i mean it's at least as good as some you know songs i've i've come across uh but you can do the same thing you can just keep prompting it and saying okay not quite now do it like this do it like this and that's where i think the expertise is going to come in but just speed that up speed that up yeah i imagine you know as advertisers we might have a ad that works right but there's so many other emotional angles to take with it you can have it write it sad write it happy write it somebody who's concerned like how fast how long would it take for a copywriter to like really get into the emotion for each of those where this is a, does a really good job of quickly iterating and spitting out copy that hits on those emotional angles that you can then go test and then iterate on i think the iteration of all this is the really interesting part how fast you can iterate yeah like if you think of writing facebook ad copy not Google ad copy because it's so much shorter, but if we're thinking like more longer form, medium form copy, if it is not for like an e-commerce product where you can be a little bit more straight to the point of with what they're getting with like a consumable product, if you're doing it for like a, a person, a course creator, a celebrity, an influencer, where it's like a personality based brand, to be able to write an effective copy, you're probably looking like at least 30 minutes. So then if you think of all of the different hooks and angles you can approach this piece of copy from, all of the different ways it can be written, 
if you take somebody that isn't an effective copywriter, they're going to spend 30 to 60 minutes and it's probably not going to be very good. A good, highly qualified copywriter would be able to write it. But, you know, I'm not a super skilled A-list copywriter. So for me to speed up my process, it's a pretty good advantage. If you have an A-list copywriter or you are one, then maybe you don't need a tool like this. But being able to give that advantage to people that aren't or to just be able to generate five variations that you can then run in split tests because we know as marketers, not everything is gonna win and not everything that we think is gonna win is gonna win. So just that variety and the speed of not having to wait a day, a week, you know, three days and then client QCing it and feedback and these, these feedback delay loops, being able to just like instantly be able to create something and get it out there where it's like good enough to be effective, I think is pretty cool. Yeah. It's just amazing. Like it's, it, we've barely scratched the surface on how we could even use this. Like, we're that's, look right, that's, this. What, what? that's what's exciting. That's where, I mean, this is right at the beginning. And, well, and it, they, it, they have an API. So it's built for people to start building applications with it yeah and then but if you want to get like super like meta about it you can have it show you how to implement it as an api into a thing yeah. I, when i get time i want to figure out if it can help me create a slack bot that uses G chat gpt so we can have that in our own slack and i i don't have any experience doing that but i've seen where people have taken like give me a set of instructions and then they feed those instructions back in to get more detail on each step of the instructions, not just, you know, for programming, but for recipes and anything else that's a series of instructions. Yeah, I think that's right. It's going to be like I could see Nick using it to write, have chat GTP create scripts to be able to pull all of the data inside of uh, Google Sheets for like performance max campaigns in, in Google. Like anything mm. code related, there's just so much potential. I'm super interested to see. And this, I think people are going to start integrating it. I could see something like Google. This is now just built in to generate and spit out your, your, all of your headlines. You just click refresh until you see all of the headlines that you like. It's just built right into the tool. Uh, I think we're really not far off there because Google has their own AI division, which is, I think they're the ones that created the the computer that would, you know, beat all the chess masters uh, <laughs> taught it to play chess. Well, imagine you can easily imagine a world where Facebook has something similar built in where you don't, you don't even have to give it copy. It just continues to iterate copy. And the benefit there is they have the feedback loop of what actually performs or not to help. Right. And, and this is where, I mean, you know, the, try not to get too tinfoil hat, but you know, you have Dali E that can be creative. So, okay, Facebook can write the copy, bring up the creative. We may have AI avatars that are like videos, talking to camera. Uh, that seems very likely now for ads. So there still has to be. But it, whenever it already exists, Nick. I walked through this entire process. So I literally, last Friday, I went down like this massive chat GPT AI rabbit hole. And I was like, how much of my content creation, can I 100% automate through AI? So I took my podcast transcription, put it into Descript. So instantly, a couple minutes, got, I got a transcription, I don't gotta do anything. Take that transcription, pop it into ChatGPT, generate headlines, podcast titles, podcast show notes, generate like a 750 word blog posts, tweets, Instagram posts, LinkedIn posts. Then I take it from there, I have it summarize stuff, and turn them into TikTok video scripts. But the beautiful part is, is then I then took that and went into other AI tools. So there's tools like adcreatives.ai or IO. You can then just pump in a few details like your headlines and it'll just automatically generate all your Facebook ad creative. And then there's Try Pencil, which will do it, but they'll also create videos and GIFs. And then you get like Lumen 5, which will take your, your text or your blog post and it'll create an actual video. And there's right. tools, I can't remember the name, but there is AI tools where it'll, you give it script and it'll be like a face to camera talking video, talking head video of an AI head just speaking your script that already exists. So you could create like a video yeah. 
that isn't even you 100 automated yeah it's it's amazing i had i i didn't know about lumen 5 i'm gonna to have to check out some of those other tools you've mentioned and i think when when the playing field gets leveled that's what's going to be interesting it's 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 about using these tools in the best way i mean it's a bit like you know being a musician d you know djs you have you know rock musicians jazz musicians saying ah oh, you know all djs do is press press buttons they're not real musicians and that's not true you know there's incredible electronic mu music that's been created so and it didn't replace musicians and again the whoever uses these tools in the most creative way I mean, that's 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 what's going to win yeah the and the inputs still matter like when the when the right. level, uh, the playing field is leveled it's those that put that have the best inputs that separate themselves because as of now these are all just kind of reverting to the mean right there's nothing in two or very um sort of like it's not a big evolution in like copywriting it's just basically a statistical model of what words are likely to come next based off this prompt so eventually things are just going to be very similar across because there aren't new inputs coming in so it's those who put the best mm. input coming in that are going to really stand out and best be able to best take advantage of all these tools yeah i agree i agree completely have you been using it at all, either of you? Have you like actually generated anything that you've put in action? Yeah. Uh, so, I'm, 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 sorry, Tom, for, you go ahead. Yeah. yeah I, I say for tier 11 stuff, I've taken some of our uh, TikTok videos and put the similar process, run it through Descript to pull out the transcript, and running it through um, more of the open AI uh, playground and generating tweet threads, which are awesome because it, it really takes all the points from a video and breaks it out into like really nice little bite-sized chunks that lend itself well to Twitter. Um, and I'm also messing around with uh, using the fine tuning within the playground uh, to see if we can generate more on brand, like longer copy things. Nice. Yeah. it'll be curious what I, what I want to see is I want to start running split tests of this versus the copywriter created stuff to see what yeah. wins Dangerous. It's like can we like what what is going to convert better that's what i'm super yeah. curious about and i think yeah. that's going to be like a selling point like here is our results our team beats ai like i feel like that's going to be like a the usp yeah. in like a couple of years i've i've seen some screenshots of those tests and i, I and it's interesting and, and usually it's it's uh, the screenshots i've seen is saying See, you know, our team wrote the copy. Here's the results. Chat GPT couldn't beat us. And it's a good, it's a good, you know, a good trick, a good little uh, screenshot to show. But again, I, I think it's that use, get the best copywriters using this, getting the best prompts. The copywriting, you know, we do have some clients who are in the copywriting education space. And I would be starting to use some hooks like, you know, this is the time to up level your copywriting. You know, you've, you've got to stand out. You, you, you can't be average now because average is going to be, be done by chat GPT and other, other AI tools. So mm -hmm. this is where you really, this is where you really, I mean, this is where copywriting skills become even more important. Oops. Yeah. So it's, it's, I feel like it's, huh. it's been interesting how this has changed, like the educational realm where teachers are like book report, right. like reports and essays can't be written at home anymore. Cause this thing does it in, in two minutes. I typed in, write me a blog post on how the iOS 14 changes affected Facebook advertisers. And it spit out like a pretty damn good blog post that I could then go use for like SEO on my website. So people are yeah. generating blog posts. I saw someone create an episode of Seinfeld where Jerry like owned the Dodgers or something like that, or sorry, the Yankees. Uh -huh. And it's incredible what it's coming up with, but I agree with you, Nick, it's going to, it's going to make it murky for that middle. But right now, like I'm just brainstorming. Like I could literally go on Fiverr where I'm just like, I will write 
you know, a Facebook ad for $10 and get all these gigs. Cause I can write a Facebook ad by just taking like the headline from their website and I can generate it in 10 seconds. Like there's right. so much income opportunity. Ask, I feel like this is gonna, it's gonna be like a job expense. It's gonna make people lose jobs, but there's gonna be more people that can leverage this tool to now create more jobs. Yeah. Apparently it's stuck on why. There we go. <laughs> I've been using it for, to write some Google ads, as, as mentioned, like writing, writing headlines with maximum 30 characters and, and descriptions. And also for just, just productivity. So you get, if you can't make a certain meeting that goes for 90 minutes and you need to then find 90 minutes to watch that call recording, well, taking that, taking the transcript, uploading, say summarize this call. Um, that's, that's powerful. Now you still may need to make sure you, you, you catch everything, but at least then you have a summary. You can go back to your teammates. This is what was covered in the call. Is this what I need to be up to speed with? Great. Okay. You've got 90 minutes back, you know, th things like that. And I've been in just on a more technical side. I'm not a Google sheets formula or Excel formula expert, but I needed to do something the other day with like V lookups and match one table with another table. And I just want to chat you between, right? What's the formula? What do I need to do here? It just gave me the formula. <laughs> it took me like five minutes. It would have taken me, probably an hour or longer to go in and like look up the docs. How do you do a V lookup? Cause I don't do it often enough to have to remember how to do it every time I have to go back and relearn it. Were you able to just copy and paste that into a in Google sheets and it worked? It worked. <laughs> and then it was, it was, it actually had phone numbers that were not formatted. We were trying to match up basically sales to phone numbers in a, uh, to, to try and track conversions. And we had two different sources. So the phone numbers weren't for formatted in one sheet the same as they were in the other. And there was, you know, hundreds and hundreds of phone numbers. So I'm like, I'm not going to sit there and manually change each one. So I thought, ah, oh, hey, chat GPT, how do I, what's a formula to change the format of this phone number that had the brackets? So, you know, the standard brackets, three numbers to this one that had no brackets and just dashes. So I said, can you just get right? How do I change this? What's a formula? Well, gave me the formula, put that in, copied, changed all the phone numbers. Good to go. It's like your personal VA. <laughs> like it can, it, it really can is. do so many monotonous tasks. So yeah. my wife, she was updating her website and she was sending some stuff off to our designer. And so she had like, I don't know, 15 video testimonials. So with all of these video testimonials, we know that it's not best practice just to like put the testimonial. So you want to put like a headline above the testimonial and a little quote from the actual video below it for people that don't watch. So she just, she transcribed each of them. And then for each of them, just like literally typed to like summarize it in like a hundred character headline and then to pull an actual quote from the transcription. So she was able to bang out, which likely would have taken a couple hours. In like 30 minutes, just like all of these, all she had to do is just the time of actually transcribing and typing the words. So there's just so many of those small tasks that you're able to automate and just streamline with this thing. Yeah. And back to your example, Nick, like, I think that's, it's really becoming clear how like unstructured and raw the data you get from Google is. Because how long would you have had to search for all these raw inputs to put together that little script to convert the right I, I you know i put in how to do a v look look up i would have found some seo optimized article that says v lookups are a very good way to you know look up certain things from different tabs okay scroll through find where the actual information is and that's where you know, we've seen okay is this a threat to google search and it i mean it it may end up being more useful for when you just want the or how to do something very quickly um, so that, that's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't, Google has organized the internet. So chat GPT, that's not its job. 
So I don't see it replacing Google. I mean, Google has their own AI projects as well. So who knows? But it was an interesting thought. I saw a lot of screenshots, people saying, okay, Google, comparing the results for people searching for something on Google. And like I said, they just see these SEO optimized articles that are annoying. You've got to scroll through, find one that's actually useful right away. Whereas ChatGPT just says, oh, yes, here we go. This is the answer. Yeah, and it's been a slow shift towards that. You think of you know, like voice technology where you're like, you know, what's the closest grocery store to go to or like what's the closest coffee shop? And it just tells you the closest coffee shop. Google is giving you variety, but they're also making money off of that. So I think that would you be safe to say that Google has the capabilities and is probably developing or already has the same type of technology that exists to have like live real time conversations with Google. It's like one of the mm. largest companies in the world. I'm pretty sure they're not like shocked by the release of chat GPT. They're probably not like, <laughs> Oh shit. We had no idea that someone could do this with information. Like, <laughs> why didn't anybody who, yeah. why didn't anybody here tell, see this happening? Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, who do you think has more compute power, more data stored up? You know, open AI or Google, oh, right. like Google I, every day. Right. So, yeah. And I think for Google, and obviously this is like, I'm just making a hypothesis, but it probably comes down to computing power. There's probably not enough computing power to do what chat GPT is doing that mm. quickly through all of the Google search results. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Google, Google's business model is built on advertising. So that's, and that's where, I mean, they, I'm sure they've paid attention here because at the end of the day, they, their biggest source of revenue is from search. So they want people to go to the Google search bar that ensures, you know, they have enough eyeballs there to advertise. And so I'm sure they're not, they haven't been oblivious to this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be curious. It'll be curious what happens once kind of this initial buzz dies down. Like I haven't been able to go on TikTok. Like every single TikTok I see is somebody, <laughs> the different use case, like I know, business ideas I mean, for this. And it's kind of interesting. Like you mentioned the, the blank page, Tom where I was seeing people start to go, like we have a, a pet client and it's like, why would pet owners want to buy this product or have a need for solving this problem with their pets? And then it just spits out a bunch of ideas. So being able to just spur ideas, kickstart your, your research process, give you a direction to go in. There's so many use cases. And I think we see obviously people kind of catastrophizing it and like copywriters are out of jobs and it's like, no, but if you take somebody that it can like benefit their process or we can speed up, you know, creating a Excel sheet formula, little things like that, it's just going to be like the, the art of like those, what are seemingly small tasks that can make such a profound impact in like our lives as people on computers, people in marketing. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been as excited about something and you a new technology, a new use case, seriously, since five, six years ago with Facebook ads, when Facebook ads were exploding. I mean, this is, I have that same feeling of, wow, this, this has so much potential. And so, oh, there we go. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, so, so maybe, uh, Aaron, our maybe, right now, maybe right now I'm at the peak of inflated. Maybe I'm still climbing the peak of inflated expectations. Yeah, Aaron, <laughs> our, our copy chief, and I were talking about this yesterday. Like, where are we on the Gartner hype cycle with this? I uh, love I'm it. Kind of curious to your takes, everybody's take on this. Like, maybe, yeah. What do you guys think? I think we're low because it was released like what a week ago, two weeks ago. So yeah. like, I don't think we can go from the base all the way to the peak in that short of a period of time. I still think we're, we're climbing our way up because oh, it yeah. is so new. I don't think 
you know, I had to like explain to my wife and like show her a bunch of things so she could even like understand what the fuck it is. I'm sorry. I don't know what the explicit rating is on the podcast, <laughs> but so it's one of those things. I don't think we're at a peak yet because it's so new, but the adoption has been incredible. The amount of yeah. users in such a short period of time has been phenomenal. What's, what's your take on it, Nick? Oh yeah, I, I, I agree. Absolutely. You know, you know, I have my highest number of views on a TikTok video ever. I have half a million views just from talking about a simple use case for chat GPT. And then my Google ads videos have like 700. <laughs> so I think we're definitely, we're going to see over the coming weeks and maybe months, a big, big peak. And then, yeah, things will die down again, but it come back up. I, I have no idea of the length of this, these these uh, peaks and trials here, but it, it's for sure. It's it's exciting, and I I think what I find most exciting about it is, again, re reiterating that you don't need to be an engineer, you don't need to be tech minded to to get the most out of this, and that's what's going to accelerate the adoption. Yeah, I have a slightly different take. I think we're on slope of enlightenment here. And the way I'm thinking of this is in the broader digital assistant category, I think there were so much inflated expectations around, you know, Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa. Mm -hmm. The use cases ended up becoming like so minuscule, like setting reminders or asking of the weather. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Interesting. But this is... Like, so we've got Alexa, stop. <laughs> Can't ever say her name. Uh, I, but I think, you know, people just kind of just got used to these small little use cases and, and got into this like disillusionment of, well, that's what that's going to be. But I think this is really like the first time where people can see a lot of broad use cases that really kind of hit a product market fit and it, where you can ask it to do all these things. Like asking one of the other digital assistants to come up with a, a Google Sheets <laughs> formula. Like are you, they're gonna you're gonna write it out when they read it to you, or I, I think my personal take is that we're kind of on this slope of enlightenment, getting to this plateau of productivity. I hope that's actually really interesting. Like, because you're going and taking it from a broader perspective, which I think now that you say that, I do think I tend to agree. Because we're talking a lot about copywriting, and there's things like uh, Jasper and other tools like that, copy AI, that are already creating copy based on your inputs not in the same way, not in the conversational way of chat GPT, but I do agree that there has been a lot of tools that have been created that a lot of people adopted and then it did die off. Like I've never found a need to use any one of those tools, but I, I, I agree that the execution of how it has been brought now is what's changed it. So yeah, I think I, I really like that perspective. And all those tools still use OpenAI's GPT-3. Like it's all from the same base what they solved was like the interface aspect, but this chat GPT really makes all those moot in my mind, right? You just, now you can have this iterative conversation that you weren't able to do while using open AI directly. And a group of people that were able to come around without needing to profit off of it right away. Yeah. So we were talking about use cases earlier, Landon, I know you had a pretty interesting one where you were using it with uh, click funnels. What was that? Yeah. So I needed to, create some custom code for click funnels. So what I wanted to do is if you know, like the high ticket coaching space where somebody might like opt in for a webinar or like a lead magnet, and then there might be like an application form one or two steps down the line to not have to have them re enter their email address on that application form when they submit it. So to be able to, when they opt in store their email address and like the local storage in their web browser, and then on the following page, pull that, populate that. Because what happens is if they opt in on page one with one email, and then they fill out an application with a different email, you now have like two records in your CRM, which mm -hmm. is pretty annoying. And then there's a lot of even systems like uh, Segmetrics that do like third-party attribution where they mm -hmm. match those things based on email. So in those scenarios, it won't actually track that application back to that 
ad that generated the opt-in so it can throw off your tracking as well. So I know it's done with JavaScript. I have somewhat of a tech background. So I just asked it to write the code to store an email address in local storage based on like when they submit the form. I'll try and try and see as you type it. Yeah. And then yeah. to it generated that JavaScript code for me. And then I created the code for the other page, write the code to pull uh, that information from local storage and populate it into a form field and, and it worked. So it was something along the lines that you said, write a JavaScript code to store an email address in local mm -hmm. storage while based, or based on when they filled out the form? Yep. And the cool thing is it tells you how to update it. So it, it like literally gives you the instructions, like you need to update this thing. So, and then there's little things that you would need to know a little bit of code to actually be able to implement it. So like, if you don't know that this needs to go inside of script tags, or if it needs to go in the header or the footer of the page, but you could ask it those questions or you can have it add those things into the code. So it's, it's really incredible the, the amount of stuff that this technology is able to do for like little things like that. I'm probably, I'm going to guess, isn't going to be able to answer that question. Uh, you never know. How do you implement this in ClickFunnels? <laughs> Let's see. It's thinking. Oh, it's thinking hard. Get out. <laughs> so everybody who's listening on the podcast, it's basically giving directions on opening the ClickFunnels um, editor, creating it's a It's like form. a step-by-step. Step by step. Yeah, step you'd, right. have, you'd have to check this, but it's very confidently writing. Yeah, and I'm uh, trying to follow along as it, funnels. <laughs> it does actually look fairly accurate. I'd have to test it to see and like double check because I can't read that quickly. All right. But it does look like it, it is fairly accurate with how you would actually do it inside of ClickFunnels, which I'm extremely surprised it was able to give you a response on that. Well, if you think about it, I, I, as far as I understand, they have basically scraped all of the internet, which would include documentation on the ClickFunnels help mm -hmm. sites and probably Reddit and every other place that people go to chat about click funnels. Like it appears to be able to synthesize all that into directions for us noobs on click funnels. And if something breaks, then that you're already that much closer to where you need to be. So finding that answer, you probably ask it or even Google at that point. Well, and it knows that like you can say, like, tell me the reasons why this wouldn't work. And then it'll list like the different things that might be causing it to not work. Like you can use it to debug your code as well. Like I've seen a lot of coding examples where software developers will put in broken code into chat GPT and it will debug their code or people will put in a block of code and ask it to translate it into a different programming language and it'll rewrite the code. I mean, like you think is, about who the engineers, how much time this is going to save them as well, because they need to be able to test it, but they know what questions to ask, what prompts to put in. And that's going to accelerate what they can build, the speed of which they can build, implement, you know, new products. So, you know, I think you might be right, Tom. I think we may be on the slope of enlightenment and not, not the the peak of, uh, what was it? The inflated expectations. Yeah. It's actually, I think this is, it's, it's, we see the use cases and the, the peak of inflated expectations may have been back a few years ago when everybody's was saying AI is going to change everything and we're all not going to have jobs because AI is going to do everything. Well, okay. Maybe not, but now we're at this actual use case. Mm-hmm. I mean, the slope of enlightenment. Yeah. Have either of you read the book, The Future is Faster Than You Think? No. Okay. No. So, super awesome book. And it goes into 
like the amount of technology it predicts is going to come out, not just technology, but like advancements in the next 10 years. The I have amount read of similar, um, the, the exponential age okay. uh, is, is a very similar theme, but yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. It's just incredible. The capabilities, like all of the stuff we can hypothesize or we see in movies, all of it exists. Mm. It's just like, is it cheap enough to be available for a consumer to purchase? Just like all of these things, because it's just little things. Like you can ask this to, like I saw someone, they're like, I need a vegan eggnog cheesecake or sorry, a keto eggnog cheesecake. And it like gives it, it just spits out a recipe. Then it's like, can you give me like how to make it? It gives them the directions on how to make it. It's like, can you add all the ingredients I need to buy at the grocery store? Spits out a grocery list for the person to go buy the ingredients. Like the next step is just going to be like, tell my robot to make it for me. There's like, I'm just like, I don't feel like we're far off because we have in like different countries, like in Asia, where there's like all of the robots that can do these things for you, like make you coffee like these technologies aren't far off of merging and being able to like have this digital assistant be the brain of your like actual robot assistant. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I've, I've seen people just like completely replace Google. Like, how do I get this stain out of my shirt? It's like, why would you want to, <laughs> why would you want to sift through Google results when you can just get one answer? Yeah, right, right. more efficient. I, I too, I also at a micro, more micro level, I guess, this is playing out. You have Google advertisers who really want to cling to the way Google Ads was working best two, three, even four years ago, being able to manually control everything, spend a lot of time in spreadsheets. And I, you know, we, I think here at tier 11, we take the approach, well, we're going to embrace the new technology. You know, Google is moving in a certain direction with the way they're building their ad platform. And this machine learning, the AI capabilities, I mean, this insane power, we should be embracing that. And I guess I, I take the same approach here. Yeah. Technology is never going to go backwards. Like once we hit these plateaus, you can continue to complain and wish you could do things the way you used to. Same thing like with the iOS 14 updates. Mm. You know, the way we, we track our results with Facebook advertising has changed indefinitely and it's way harder. And we can, you know, wish and talk about the good old days when we could like actually measure our results. But it wouldn't, but it's never as true as we actually thought it was. We just thought we had more control. And as soon as that was messed with, you need to either adopt and learn how to play the new game and just know it's going to continue to evolve. We're only going to create more automation, have more driven from the algorithm. There's still a lot of debate on so many of those features inside of, you know, performance max versus not using performance max in Google or using advantage plus shopping or advantage plus, you know, placements and bidding inside of Facebook versus not using it they're only going to keep releasing more of those features. So it's like you either figure out how to adopt it and figure out how to leverage it and use it to your advantage, or you're just slowly going to get replaced and you're not going to be on the cutting edge. Yeah. yeah. There's always, I, mean, I think as humans, we always wish things would go back to a simpler time, right? But things never get simpler. They only get more complex. Yeah, it's just, you have to, especially in this industry and in any industry really like you have to just accept that and try to stay abreast of all of these things. Yeah. And, and be, be prepared to, to be wrong. I mean, we talked about the hype of inflated expectations. Sometimes things are wrong. I mean, I remember going back a few years ago, it was many chat chat bots, Facebook messenger marketing was, you know, everywhere you looked, it was like, this is the next, the next big thing in marketing, everybody's going to replace websites. Chatbots are going to replace websites. And, you know, okay, it didn't happen. So, uh, but, you know, the chatbots are still very useful. So, you know, you, it, it, we're going to be wrong sometimes, but we need, we need to be open and, and not, not, yeah, not try and 
resist or fight against the, the mm-hmm. progress. Yeah, like once we reach that plateau, like I don't think that some, you know, like EA Sports is going to stop hiring software engineers to, to write the code for their new games because we have open AI. They might yeah. leverage open AI to like debug something or some tools might adopt that technology to integrate into the tools that are being used. I think it's like a, an integration thing. It's just going to be a complement to what's going on. I don't think we're far off, but I think we're still too far away from like mass disruption in like complete automation and things like that of using AI. Cause I think it, too many people are unfamiliar with it. It's like talking about cryptocurrency or NFTs with like your parents. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like it's, there's too much distance and too much of a, a gap to try and bridge. But I'm going to, I think we're going to see just like this complement to what people are already doing. Yeah. And I, it, it, it seems like all of human innovation is not about replacing jobs. It's all about increasing productivity, which increases value, which, which is I, this idea of like an always growing economy. It's not because there's more money. It's just because there's more productivity and more stuff's created for less work. And this definitely feeds into that. And that's why I think we're hopefully getting close to like that plateau of productivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I find it really interesting because there's so much talk about people like losing jobs. You think of, okay, Amazon has created autonomous grocery stores. Now we don't need, you know, people to stock shelves and we don't need people to ring stuff through, but it's like the creation of this technology also creates jobs. Mm -hmm. It creates opportunity for people to start new businesses and the people that start those businesses employ people to do certain things. I don't think we're just going to be like run by robots. There's still a degree of things and it's just like a shift. It might replace a job over here, but it's probably going to create an opportunity on the other side. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to fear like <clears throat> getting to the future of Wally, where you're a bunch of fat slobs just floating off in a spaceship, because you can ask uh, ChatGPT to create a workout program for you and a diet program. Exactly. Unfortunately, it can't <laughs> do the workout for you yet. That's true. <laughs> that's right. That's that's something it can't do. Uh, let's see. Any other interesting use cases that you've seen or or want to try? I really, uh, geez, I I actually just want to get stuck into this and just I, I I could spend all my free time playing around with this and trying different use cases in in both for advertising and just for creating and just to really push it as far as I can. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'd like you to see you go to like the uh, Weird Al Yankovic route and just become like the Google ads rapper. Like have a bunch of, write a bunch of Google ads raps for you. <laughs> if, uh, it would, it, it can do it. So I, I it, now it's not a question. Here's the thing, Tom, if you challenged me to do that previously, there would be a question of whether I could do that. Now it's not a question of whether I can or I can't. It's whether I'm going to do it. <laughs> you could write all of your ads for the, the guitars you're selling. All of the ads should be songs or like mm. a verse. Right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. And I think another thing that uh, we haven't really hit on, but chat GPT is really good at is combining ideas. I know right. uh, <clears throat> we're working on a lead magnet for the lawyer niche and the idea is like creating headlines that feel like they're part of a legal document, which the amount of research that would go into like, like the wording and language of like legalese, like that's time consuming. Then using all the expertise that you have as a copywriter to make that still persuasive, we plug that into chat GPT and it gave us 10 headlines that felt like they could be, you know, part of a legal document, whether, you know, you know, it's a court document or even some sort of like a, I don't know if you guys have like legal ads where you are, but there's some pretty uh, extravagant legal ads out here. Yeah, it's super interesting. And it's like we came back, it, it all comes down to the inputs. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to put the right inputs into the machine to get a result and have the the requisite knowledge to discern if it's actually good or not. Yeah. 
All right, guys. Well, I'm sure we'll be doing plenty more of these once we get more hands-on time and really interesting use cases. I really appreciate uh, you joining us, and I won't make chat GPT come up with like a, a closing and a CTA. So I'll say thank you everybody for watching the customer acquisition show. We didn't talk a ton about customer acquisition, but we think this is a pretty important tool um, moving forward and really opening your mind to using how having chat GPT, like execute on your ideas that you would then iterate on to really help you find new customers and increase their lifetime value. Um, if you're interested in talking more to tier 11 about becoming a potential client, go over to tier 11.com and hit the big pink button, fill out the form and we'd be happy to chat uh, with a real human probably. All right. Well, thank you very much guys. And uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.